crypto retirement. Now is the time to invest in your future. We are giving you a chance to obtain a lifetime membership to Token Metrics' AI research platform that puts machine learning together with human analysts. September 10th is the day. Mark it on your calendar. Get involved now while ETH is still reasonably priced. There will be an exclusive alpha group in the Astrobot Discord. That, as you can tell, is only available to Astrobot NFT holders. There will be spectacular airdrops like what we saw in Azuki earlier this year at NFT LA. Get on the white list now join the astrobot society discord and follow at astrobot society on twitter to get the link where you can mint an astro we are live this is the market update i'm your host bill noble this show is brought to you by the astrobots the mint is tomorrow noon eastern this show is brought to you by tokenmetrics.com if you need a roadmap in crypto, subscribe to this channel. Turn on alerts so you know when we're going live. And if you like the content, please give us a thumbs up. Now, before we do this, I'll probably make this announcement more than once. But we are planning to go live tomorrow three times. Yes, you heard that. Three times. We're going live just before and just after the mint for the whitelist, just before and just after the mint for the waitlist, and just before and just after the public sale starts. Okay. <laughs> so that's a nice way of saying we ain't playing. All right. We're going to give you the biggest alpha drop we can today and tomorrow to really, really show you the compelling reason to get an AstroBot, to subscribe to our YouTube channel, right? To become a Token Metrics customer. We'll tell you who we are, what's going on with the market. If you've been watching the market update, keep watching the market update. You never know when we're going to pop up here, right? So stay with us. All right, let's welcome who's on the stream, right? Somebody says, we have a Dingo 8 My Satoshis is here. Welcome. All right, Bill, when Lambo, I'm ready for the mint. All right, love it. Okay, Soli Soul, first on the stream, a regular, thank you. Crypto Stacker, Dan's Ada, welcome. The Warpler, Oxford, England is here, right? Long live the king. Okay, tune in live from Disney World. That's what I'm talking about. It's Crypto Disney World. Andre Brits, yeah, Astrobot Society. Yeah. Okay. All right. We have in the air from Dallas to Fort Lauderdale, Minnesota, right? <clears throat> Mr. Preman and whitelist, but whatever I'm getting in Maddie J. All right. There will be Astrobots to buy. That's what we understand. If you miss the whitelist, right? Unless everybody on the whitelist mints three NFTs. So there will be AstroBots out there. We want to make sure everybody who wants one gets one. Okay, what's going on, Token Metrics crew? Right, welcome. We appreciate you. Can we short Luna C? I don't know. I don't know. Right, wrong again. Says Bill. I'm gonna miss you, man. All right. Well, don't worry. You know we're gonna we're gonna figure out a way to 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 stay a little bit on YouTube. Don't worry. All right. I, I know there's a lot of people. I know there's a lot of people out there who want the market update. We need to be somewhat, we need to give a lot of alpha to our customers, but you know, I'm going to figure out a way to, to do the stream to make sure that, you know, I show you guys some love. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us. Right. Top recruit says on the white list, LFG. That's what I'm talking about. Naples, New York, Washington, DC. Okay, here for the alpha drop. Wrong again, another regular. Good day from Australia. Welcome. Italy in the house. Get that firewood. Okay, can't wait to get an Astrobot, says Daydream. Okay, Lorraine is here. Ireland is here. Welcome. 
Okay, loving the market update from Montreal. We appreciate you and appreciate everybody who watches. Peru is here. Okay, any more whitelists for token metric subscribers? Well, I would email support at tokenmetrics.com in a hurry. My understanding is the whitelist is sold out. But, you know, again, if you're a customer, you may have a spot. You got to check it out. You got to subscribe, you know, get with the support people quickly. Okay. Somebody saying, I get mine today. Somebody wants a bear market legacy war story today. Wow. All right. Maybe we can hook you up with that. Maybe we'll start with that. Don't let me forget. Okay. MMK56 says, smash the like. Astrobot Society NFT is the blue chip NFT, according to Crypto Cypher. Thank you for saying the things that, you know, I kind of can. I can't go over that investment advice line, despite my enthusiasm and my duty as a token metrics employee to tell you all the good things that our company has to offer. Megan is here. Welcome. Right. Megan is I'm wherever Bill is. Man, that is that that is love. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Getting some love from Jabo Mass One. Welcome. Poland is here. Maldives, Montreal, Africa in the house, Ghana. How many can we mint tomorrow? Okay. Mint, you can do three per wallet for the white list. The wait list, you can do 10 NFTs. Okay. I guess that was per wallet and the public sale, you can just go wild. So whitelist is, is it three NFTs per wallet or four NFTs per wallet? Let me just check. Yeah. Okay. Three, each wallet will be able to mint a max of three NFTs for 0.35 ETH a piece. Hopefully I gave you some good guidance about getting ETH in those wallets over the last week, Brooklyn is here. Welcome. Tony Estrada, BK Crypto. How how many NFTs per person? We will make sure we go into that. I believe Britain is here. Okay. Can I look into a layer one? Don't let me forget. Ambrose, AMB. Okay. Good morning from Madison Square Garden, the world's most famous arena. and. Aiken is here. Okay, people, let's jump into everything. <laughs> it's everything. All right. Okay, let's just start with let's start with Astrobot. Let's just like read it out so that people know what's up. Okay. Whitelist. It's it's sold out. Sale begins September 10th, noon Eastern. Ends 4 p.m. Eastern. Okay. Only whitelisted wallets eligible. Each wallet will be able to mint a max of three at 0.35 ETH. If any NFTs remain after the private sale, the mint will proceed to the waitlist sale. The waitlist, okay, is 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. We will be live an hour before each one of these things start. So half hour before and a half hour into it. All whitelisted wallets and people who registered via pre-mint are eligible to purchase on the waitlist up to 10 NFTs. The sale will proceed to the public sale, right? Where you can, any wallet can purchase as many as, as many NFTs as they want for 0.45, right? And then they're off to the races. I did a space last night with a kaiju group nft group with like 200,000 followers and there was a moment where i was like when they these guys came on and they were like f yeah we're doing this utility but we're in it for the art right like i can tell you art and stocks are not correlated because i'm an analyst but these guys came in and they were like hell yeah we want the art so that leads me to believe that we may have a little pop, right? These, these things may have these things may have some jump to it, right? Out of the gate because they're going to want the utility because the market's going up, right? You get the alpha group with me, et cetera. We'll go into all of that. All right, let's let's go from that to the news, okay? Oops. 
Okay. So everybody decided to fade Big Brother Bitcoin, and I told you not to in Twitter spaces and market updates. Don't underestimate what Big Boy can do. Everybody gave up at 18K. That was a give up trade. I showed a chart. It said give up. Wake up, up 10%. What do you think is going to happen when you wake up and figure people figure out this whole ETH supply thing? Like Cosmos up 12%, right? The winners, the interoperability. I personally think Polkadot's next, okay? So people still think there are going to be rate hikes. Uh, you know, that will be really interesting when you see people in Europe huddled around, you know, oil barrels, burning wood and whatever they can find, wearing blankets, like something out of the depression in, in the 30s. You know, good luck expecting more rate hikes after September. Okay. Coinbase backs a lawsuit against the Treasury over tornado cash. You know what, folks? Privacy is not just for pirates. Don't be surprised. Like I'm saying, this ETH merge is like an election, right? This is why it's important to be in the token metrics ecosystem, right? When this thing goes up, Right when the when the election happens, the first thing you're going to want to do is get in the alpha group and get all the information that we have on our site that I'm always demoing on the market update. Okay, Animoca Brands confirms 110 million funding round. Right, blockchain gaming and investment companies has raised 110 million dollars. Okay, for the issuance of convertible notes. So much for the demise of the metaverse right? Metaverse gaming. Look, folks, it's going that way. What are the tokens worth? What NFT should you buy? I don't know. That requires research, right? Okay. The metaverse enjoys potential to ramp existing brand marketing. Little guy innovates, big guy wins. There is absolutely no way that 12 months from now, Every big corporation, particular in the consumer end, right, is going to not be in the metaverse, okay? The gradual transition towards consumer-led brand marketing contributes heavily to metaverse community growth. In other words, Gucci isn't going to tell you what you're wearing. You're going to use a DAO to tell Gucci. Now, why does that matter? Because all the reasons why you've ever been involved in crypto are about to come to fruition as the whole world is distracted over here by macro. I'm not saying macro doesn't matter, but what I'm saying is your head needs to tilt over here to art, NFTs, and all, all, this, all the reasons why you've been in crypto, right? I mean, OpenSea volume down 99%. Okay, no one's interested in NFTs, which is why you should get the Hoover out and Hoover it all up. Okay, global NFT market expected to hit whoop 97 billion by 2028. Okay, in the modern era, NFTs have a wide range of applications in the field of digital content, yeah, like crypto research. Okay. King Charles takes the throne. Long live the king. Long live the king. England is an ally of the United States. If you're Gen Z or, you know, you haven't studied history, that's okay. Let me explain it to you, right? England and the United States, what do they do? Well, they fight bad guys together. On July 4th, when the United States broke away from England, we're so tight with those guys, they fly the English flag and the American flag, <clears throat> and they celebrate our Independence Day. That's how tight we are with England, right? So for everybody on this show who watches from Europe, who comes home from work, tired AF, and watches our show, heads up to you, right? Long live the king, okay? White House, Bitcoin mining must be greener or U.S. should ban it. Excellent. Joe Biden doesn't like it. Whatever Joe Biden says, maybe just do the opposite. <laughs> right? I mean, the poor guy's been wrong about a lot of things. 
So why not add Bitcoin to the mix? Hate to say that about the president of the United States, but banning Bitcoin and banning freedom is not the answer. It's not. Let the free market figure out how to get greener. I think the Bitcoin mining community doesn't know that they need to get greener with ETH going proof of stake, right? Young people want green. Let the market do the talking, right? So, yeah, all right. You can make jokes about Joe Biden. Everybody makes jokes about Joe Biden. How about we believe in free markets? How about we remember why we're in crypto in the first place? Speaking of free markets, mortgage rates hit 5.89%, highest since the last time housing cratered. Yeah, people, uh, housing goes from all buyers to all sellers like that. And the Fed is talking about selling mortgage-backed securities on their balance sheet. What does that mean? I don't know. Rates are going to go up and then lending standards are going to get tighter. So we'll lend you money at a very high price if you qualify. Yeah. Okay. That's a recipe for more tightening. <sighs> Crypto is forward looking. You got to see this and you got to see the future, right? The Fed's talking tough now. They should have been talking tough a year and a half ago. Okay. Singapore-based bank partners with Sandbox to launch a better world. Launch a better world. Isn't that what crypto is all about? Isn't this why we think ETH can go to 3,000? Isn't this why Token Metrics is doing an NFT to get you lifetime access in cool art? This is why. We want to go Web3. Web3 is not somebody in a bunny NFT costume drinking a $7 latte. Web3 is about connectivity, ownership, decentralized ownership, right? A membership in token metrics you can hand down to your kids, okay? Now, let's see what else we got going on. Let's see what we got going on in the chat, right? Wrong again says, ETH can go so high, I don't even want to say it. Me either, man. Me either. Arthur Hayes says 3,000. Uh, that was on a video yesterday. Man, I could tell he thinks it can go higher. You want ETH while it's cheap, and you want ETH-based assets that can help you take advantage of what is about to happen. Right? All right? <laughs> okay, Paul is reminding me, Bill, stop saying England. It's the UK. I'm from Scotland. I stand corrected. Okay. Our friends in the United Kingdom. All right. Our friends in the United Kingdom. You are our friends and we appreciate your viewership. Okay. <laughs> Durant says, I still observe the amusement, this American fetish with the British Royal family. Wow. Looks like I started a brush fire this morning. <laughs> okay. All I want to say is I wish all our friends from Europe who watch us well. All right. Greg says, great to have Bill at a normal European schedule. All right. Now, I don't want the stream to shit the bed, so let's get into the market. Okay. ETH, tactical, four-hour chart. There's resistance at 1758. Will people sell there? Probably, right? It's been in a range. When it's been in a range, people expect it to stay in a range. Could there be a spike up and a top over the weekend and maybe a retest of this level? Yeah, because the market has shown a propensity to do wild things on the weekend. Now, let's go back to the big picture, right? This was all pie in the sky yesterday. Actually, I got to go to the PowerPoint for this because it's worth the wait. Okay. So I'm listening to Arthur Hayes yesterday. And I'm like, you know, 
it's because I get pumped up on television. You know, I'm taking risks like everybody else. You know, I got to talk on TV every day. I don't want to be the guy that says, let's go up and, you know, you buy the high and it goes to zero. You know, this happens to Jim Cramer and I don't want it to happen to me. But Jesse Livermore, all right, a famous trader from the early 20th century. That means the 1900s. He identified a formation where a market trades in an upward sloping consolidation, and that is the prelude to a parabolic. Uh, I did a show last night with Danger Close Alpha with some like guy who really is kind of a really pumped up day trader. And he says in his discord that every time somebody asks him a question, he responds with a Jesse Livermore quote. Jesse Livermore was a trader uh, featured in a fictional book about him called Reminiscence of a Stock Operator uh, in between live streams on Saturday and Sunday. Maybe that can be some reading in between watching Texas play Alabama. Okay. ETH can go up. ETH can go up more than anyone thinks, and it can do so in a compressed time frame. Okay. An undersold chart in total two, okay? Total two, wave one up from the June low. Wave two down, everybody thought it was the end of the world. That is normally where a gradual steady trend starts, which is what you got from the middle of July to the middle of August. Then you got this corrective activity, which once again looked and felt like the end of the world. It held 62% of the three wave, which is textbook Elliott wave. And then the five wave should be emotional. Like five waves are normally just straight up in three pieces, like big up, sit, big up. Right. And I want you to be there for that because I've been talking about this. Like, you know, how long have I been talking about it? Zcash, okay? Coinbase is sticking up for Tornado Cash. I'm sticking up for Zcash, and I saw a secret pop this morning. So ETH merge is crypto election week or crypto election month, right? Will it be Solana? Don't forget, ETH and Solana are going to have like operating systems where they're going to give you phones that are going to, you know, they're going to give you airdrops that help you pay for the phones. I studied this, right? Once upon a time, you used to have a BlackBerry, right, for email and text and maybe phone. And then you had an iPhone for your music and your videos. You may have one day like an ETH phone or a Solana phone. And I think people have forgotten about that and privacy, right? Don't forget the Astrobot Discord. There's a we've only gotten, you know, we've gotten some good conversation when we've done these like Astrobot Twitter spaces, but these morning meetings, right, are going to be important, right? Because it's up in September and who knows in November. So these morning meetings that are going to go on, they've been successful. Their audio, I'm probably going to drop stuff in the Discord. That is Astrobot only. Right. The morning meeting is for Astrobot holders. Okay. September 10th is the date. Okay. That's the pricing 0 0.35, 0 0.4, and 0 0.45. Right. You know, get that ETH in that wallet. Okay. Let's go back. Let's go back to live TA. See what else we got going on in the chat. Aaron's talking about Cosmos. Yes, Cosmos 2.0 is coming out. I think Polkadot is next. Link finally getting some traction. Right. In other words, everybody thinks ETH and everything on ETH is dead. I don't know why people think that. I know. Arthur Hayes said the same thing. Like the whole ETH universe, like Web3, you know. Everyone's like, oh, I'm in Web3. I see this on LinkedIn all the time. I'm in Web3. Let's talk about Web3. I'm a Web3 consultant. Okay, great. How about Chainlink? 
They're Web3 consultants. They help you connect one chain to the other, right? Oh my God, secret. Okay, we're going to go back to this on token metrics. Okay, here's that 60-day exponential moving average with that secret layer one breaking out. Okay, you know, that's a big deal. That's a big deal. Let me go back to the top of the comments because I know somebody was looking to check layer ones. Okay. Okay. If there's a layer one, somebody wanted me to look into, drop it in the comments. Okay. Cypher, crypto cypher says people still do not get NFTs. Get in before it's mainstream. LFG, NFA could not have said it better. Secret allows you to do NFTs without people seeing what's in your wallet. Okay. Very, very, very interesting. All right. Let's go over to token metrics and start looking at levels. Let's start with ETH. Oh, come on. I was getting to it. <laughs> no, actually, I wasn't. You're right. Okay. Okay. Token metrics, technical analysis. Okay. Okay. Now, let's remember the levels that we've been talking about. One of the levels was like 1752. Okay. You're going to be living here over the next week. Right. I mean, this is this, I've been living here. So 1656, I said above that, that's constructive, right? Also of note, last time ETH went to approach the level at 2042, it pulled up short. That leads me to believe that if they go up there and take that out, right? If they go up there again, they're going to take it out. Now, let's go to the market page. Pounding the table on this. 17% of big cap coins are still below their 60-day exponential moving average or their three-month average. I, I mean, this dial has not moved since July. I mean, it's a little higher, but I mean, during the bear market, it was like 9%, 10%. It just has not moved. Like when the ETH merge comes out, I mean, every coin is not going to win. Some stuff's going to go up a lot. Some stuff's going to go down a lot. That dial is going to go like this. Whoop. Right. Why? Well, because people are going to remember why they're in crypto to begin with. And I want to remind you of that now. Get you in that mindset. Right. In other words, ETH, Bitcoin, Polkadot, Astrobot. What do they all have in common? They all have in common. They're the reasons why you got into crypto. Like I, I, I stay at some guy's house, friend of mine. He's got like in his guest room, he's got the Bitcoin standard on his desk. You can believe Bitcoin is the standard or not, but like everybody remembers the book. Everybody remember. I remember the first phone call that I got from a guy who used to read my work at Goldman who said, dude, the ex Goldman crowd wants to know what you think about crypto. Now, back to a legacy bear market war story. Okay. There was a time during the 2008 crash where that move in equities was so violent, right? And so, so like surprising that the bankruptcy of Lehman and the destruction of the mortgage backed security market would lead to a collapse in stocks, all stocks. There was a story where there was a guy in our proprietary trading unit, because back then, banks could trade for their own account, meaning the bank would give traders capital and they would trade with the bank's money. Okay, huge units. They were, they were epic consumers of my work. The guy told me that like all the other analysts like I was the only analyst who could produce consistent work in that environment. Not because I was a super genius, just because my work as a technical analyst allowed me to be flexible enough 
to do things like talk on TV. You know, I wasn't talking on TV back then, but I was writing regular reports. And he told me that he simply sat there and stared at his computer screen waiting for what I was going to say next. And then there were other instances where, you know, I would do stuff. I would write about support and resistance levels, but the market was so wild that the traders couldn't get filled at the levels. The market would hit the points and move so fast, right, that they couldn't even trade it. But what they did was they sat around and watched my reports, and I guess that was the beginning of Bill Noble TV, where they would just sit there and watch the market ping pong around, you know, off the levels that I gave them, right? And at the end of it, you know, my boss – who is still there, right? Who is, I, I know, he's kind of like the voice of Goldman Sachs equities now. You know, he gave me and the other technical analysts credit that nobody got the market right at that time better than me and that other guy. You know, he was a big picture guy and I was the tactical guy, all right? So now another bear market war story. Here's a bear market war story. So my father was, you know, he's passed on. Uh, he started as a stockbroker at Merrill Lynch. Okay. Back in 1974. Now there was a bear market in 1974. Now that bear market wasn't like 2008 in terms of the speed that it went down. But the bear market in 74, when there was inflation and all kinds of problems in the U.S., you know, issues after the Vietnam War, that he could not get anybody to buy one single share of stock. Not one share. His father, my grandfather, was in the hospital. And he would go visit his father to cheer him up. And it actually wound up being the reverse. My grandfather would have to cheer or would cheer up my father because nobody would buy one single stock, not nothing. Kind of reminds me of what's going on on OpenSea, like OpenSea in trouble, volume down 99%. Hmm. Right? Time to buy an NFT maybe? Okay. Bear markets end with despair revulsion, hesitation, disinterest. Check the view count on yesterday's market update. Not surprised. I looked at it. It's like, oh, this is the, one of the lowest counts ever. Boom. Bitcoin up 10% next day. No one interested, right? The hallmark of this show, what we're going to be doing in the morning meeting in Discord and what's always going on on the Token Metrics website, is we want to get you in before it happens. Okay, before it happens, right? All right, bear market war stories. I used to work at the futures exchange when it was all done by humans. So now you go on Coinbase and you see all the bids and all the offers. And, you know, back at the exchange, you know, you, it was up on the electronic board, but it was on the electronic board because there was somebody looking down into the pit where people would say it's two bid, offered at three, right? Three start to trade, threes are gone, it's now four bid. That's what they would put up on the electronic screen, which would be transferred out everywhere. I was what they call a phone clerk because I wasn't big enough to be in the pit. I'm sure you can look at me and tell me I'm not exactly a svelte guy. I was too small to be in the pit. Okay, I was on the phone and I would signal in orders like, you know, buy a hundred at two and somebody else would see that they would turn around to the guy inside the pit and somehow the order would get filled. I was on the floor during the tightening cycle in 1994. I saw the eight and one eighth long bond I and, and the bond pit back then was huge. I mean, it was the Bitcoin of its day. It was, it was a monster. Okay. I saw a limit down move off a payroll number, meaning 
unemployment job creation was so good that the Fed could not slow down the economy or what was jokingly referred to as inflation at that time. There was also a lot of distress in other parts of the bond market. The noise off the limit down move, right, caused me to shout the price into the phone so loud that I actually got in trouble. The big boss came down from upstairs and was like, dude, a little impartiality. You know, it, it was like a human vocal release that was just unbelievable. And I literally, I, I watched the eight and one eighth long bond, 8% long bond. I watched it. I saw the humans and right here, like my webcam, like my screen, I could actually watch the chart. And that's how I learned. I would watch the chart and I would watch the humanity behind the chart. And now I'm bringing that to you. And that's part of what we bring at Token Metrics to you. Okay, back to live TA. Wrong again says, don't forget the bear market war story. Uh, you got three for the price of one on that. All right, somebody's asking, what about EOS? Ooh, interesting question. Remember, this, this is multi-coin. He, he says this is their biggest mistake, that they invested in EOS. Okay, so it's kind of this empty blockchain. Interesting that it is above. I'm not sharing the screen. I can feel that button about to get pushed maybe. Am I sharing the screen? Okay. So EOS trading above its 60-day exponential moving average. Okay, in some strange way, I don't hate this trade. I'm saying like, I am convinced, and this doesn't really help you, but I am convinced that there are going to be weird, weird moves off this merch. Right. And now maybe it's as simple as the stuff that goes up is the stuff everyone hates. Everyone hated Bitcoin two days ago. It was over, done. It's game over. You know, some of these YouTubers were like, crypto winter, see ya, and uh, see you at the next halving. I'm like, why is everyone giving up on Bitcoin? Why? Because the dollar is so great. Is the dollar so great? Okay. There's the dollar at the hidden pivot level at 110. Yeah. Okay. They're buying the dip, right? The trend is your friend. I know, but you know, is, is the dollar so great that crypto should stay depressed? Is the dollar so great that you should give up on crypto? Okay, is the HNT pump over? So HNT is probably in this like wild stage. Okay, my guess is, is that when you have forced liquidation, and this happened in the regular market, right? When you had forced liquidation, it takes a while for the market to digest what's happening, right? So, I mean... You'll know that helium is for real on the upside. Okay. I'd like to see it hold 475. It's got to hold the 62% retracement of the ramp around 413. Okay. So it may not be shocking to see helium come back down and test 413. Again, I, I continue to believe that this is a forced liquidation scenario. Okay. Oh, Thor chain. Oh my God. Cross chain. You know, <laughs> like Rune is such a secret guilty pleasure that I, I can't even talk about it. <laughs> I'm saying like, I don't. I don't, I don't talk about it that much. You know, I, I, I know these guys, I see them in Austin. I've been to their events. Uh, I like the art on the Thor guard NFT personally. God, this whole idea about being able to go from Bitcoin to Solana, you know, to just being able to do that on a DEX. 
right? In this world where, you know, you go back to centralized exchanges, you know, I was giving the government a hard time before, but man, they could come down on crypto. You may have to do stuff on the decks. You know, it's a nice looking weekly candle. There's a lot of trading left in the week, but you know, it, it, it is down here on support. Stretch this out. You know, this is where the whole rally started from, right? Like right here, like this was this, this point here, right? Like once it broke out and retested the line where it is right now, it just totally ramped, you know, like I said, there are going to be winners and losers. Now, I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want you to be stupid. But if you're a speculator, place your bets, right? The wheel's going to spin, right? Now, don't make a bet that can blow up your account. Like when I say like do a trade or you want to speculate, you know, that's like one half of 1%, right? But, you know, there's there's something out there Right. Remember, there was something out there and it ain't no man. Well, now it's like there's something out there and it's going to move. Like it's going to move like in a shocking way. I'm convinced of that. Okay. Alpha, the, the, the heartbreaker of all time. Right. I, I, I was in love with this thing. And like my grammar school girlfriend, I, I just got crushed. Okay. So again, I don't like the failure above the 60 day moving average. That said, I will start to really like anything that can reclaim the 60 day and stay above it off the merge. Can alpha do that? I don't know, but I'm not going back for seconds on a heartbreak. Okay. Okay. Is it Luna C? Okay, Luna Classic. So this mooned a lot. Uh, you know, we're following this meme coin. I'm not going to put it up. Uh, when it comes to Luna, uh, we looked at Luna, and I said after the debacle, it looks like Luna Inu. The Luna Inu meme coin popped up like two days later. Uh, I think I'd rather play in the meme coin than this. This is Luna Classic. Okay, T fuel, someone's asking for. Okay, again, you know, it's boring, but where is my coin relative to the 60 day? Right? Where is it? And then I also think, you know, to a certain degree, maybe not on the weekly chart, but maybe as you get closer to the merge. On this four hour charts, okay, of some of these coins, okay, what is interesting to me is where this Williams oscillator is. Okay, sometimes when that Williams oscillator gets close to zero, like that can mean a big move's coming. I've seen this a lot. Matter of fact, if you look at T Fuel, right, if I, can, if I can't even fit it on the screen. I think the last time T Fuel had the Williams oscillator basically at zero, you know, the market avalanched lower. Okay. And I think this could also be the bigger the base, the higher in the space. Now, on that note, one of the things that may be interesting about the ETH merge period in about September is that coins that people gave up on may come back. Right. Like you could have like an explosion in certain things. Okay. So Matthias says, can I mint an Astrobot with my whitelisted trust wallet or does it just work with MetaMask? Okay. Um, I believe they're using MetaMask, Coinbase wallet, and I don't know what the other wallet is. Maybe we can get an answer to that in the chat. Okay, I, I, or you can DM, you know, 
Astrobot Society on Twitter. Okay. Oh, now somebody wants to look at, at wow, we got a couple of them here. ICP. And as I said earlier, if you're joining in late, we're going to basically be on all weekend. Okay. 12 to 4 is the mint. Public sales 4 to 8. Right? No. Pup, mint is 12 to 4 Eastern. Wait list is 4 to 8. Public sale starts at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to be on, you know, a half hour before and a half hour after each phase starts. So collect your portfolio, get, get your coins in. We're going to drop some alpha. If you want to hear more war stories, if you like that, leave a comment. We read the comments. Tell us what you want. If you had three market updates in one day, tell us what you want. If you want to see, if you want to tell us what you want, the market update after the mint, let us know. We will deliver. Okay. So uh, let's see. ICP. Okay. It wants to push through. It wants to push through the 60 day. Okay. You know, not getting anything off the Williams oscillator. You know, let's see if we go to like a different time frame, like a three day. So it, it's a good looking candle on a three day, but I, at the end of the day, right? Let's just see what it looks like on token metrics. I know we got a lot of ICP fans. So again, you know, I, I don't know this. What, what can I say about this? I got a computer drawing support and resistance levels that the whole rest of the world can't see. So the whole world's using trading view and we can see stuff here that other people can't. Okay. So I have ICP trading around $7 and support is at 611. And if I'm reading this right, I don't really see any resistance. Okay. I don't think I see any resistance until much higher prices. I'm going to reload the page just to make sure I, I can't even believe that that that's right. Yeah, I know the IC people are standing. ICP people are standing. Yeah, I mean, there's no resistance until 15. So if this is the bigger the base, the higher in the space, the upside target's 15. You don't see that. You don't see that every day. Let me tell you, not investment advice. So, you know, like I said, somewhere in here when crypto gets loose, I mean, this is what you're looking for. This Our hedge fund guys do this, like, they try to figure out what they're going to be long and what they're going to be short. They have a bunch of stuff that they look at, but then they eventually wind up here and be like, all right, you know, what, what's the risk reward here? I mean, we got all kinds of tools and I answered the question that Twitter space this morning. It's like, well, Bill, sometimes you're using this tool and sometimes you're using that tool. Yeah. You know, that's why you have analysts. That's why you have the Astrobot discord. That's why you have token metrics because we got real analysts. Right. We got machine learning and AI, but we got real analysts. Okay. So engine coin is very similar, right? You know, I, I, I would think this is some sort of NFT infrastructure play. And of course, everyone's given up on infrastructure. Everybody's given up on NFTs. I, I swear to God, I would love it if the bottom of the NFT market, if like Astrobot was like the low print. And the whole space just took off. And everybody goes, wow, look at those Astrobot guys getting their customers in at the low. Think about that. Right? You know, crypto is full of hopes and dreams. When do you want to have hopes and dreams? At the top of the market, when you heard about it at the barbershop because your friend made money, or when nobody's into it. You just slide in and hoover it. 
Engine coin, I don't know, 45 cents is support. I don't know how many times they can hammer on it. 63 and 78 is resistance above that. Okay, I can put up helium here. Funny, there's more interest in this token now that it's gone down. You know. Okay, so it looks like helium went back to mama back in the uh, back in the old days in September 2020 when it went to 361 and now there's resistance at 513. So, you know, it's got resistance at 513 and 688 and I would imagine helium would get out of the woods if it can get back above 688. I still think you yeah, this is a give up trade. It's just that simple. This is just I mean, especially when you see this like down, 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 like six red candles in a row is a give up trade, which is why it's getting unwound and may, may eventually get unwound because people just packed it in. Okay. Super chat from CB. Love the war stories. Love the war stories. All right. Well, I'll be thinking of them as I'm on the air right now. Don't forget to tune into the market update for everything including war stories. Synapse. You know, somebody in the chat can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, I've heard talk that somebody thinks that like this, this is like a chain link competitor. If I'm, if I'm right. Well, let's just chart it and see. So Synapse has resistance at $1.89, okay? These green candles, this looks like they want to take it out, and this does look like head, shoulder, head, shoulder. So if you start taking out 189 right, you might actually start attacking 229 right? And then, you know, it's tough to find resistance after that. It's like if it takes out 189, 229, 264, and 320. This looks like a head and shoulders bottom. This looks like this looks like a real base. It looks like a, the real deal. We'll see. Okay. Hellrod says, I see most NFT AMAs are more focused on hugs and songs. Well, man, there's nothing wrong with hugs and songs, but, you know, the price is a function of a set of information. I'll save you having to go to get an MBA at the University of Texas. The price is a function of a set of information. He who understands that set of information the best wins, period. Okay. Sunday swap, maybe? No market cap rank, not a lot of data. Let's see what I can get up here. Okay. So, you know, this is a popular question. What about my totally destroyed altcoin? Well, if your totally destroyed altcoin is ever going to wake up, it could be now. So this is at 0.028. The next level is 0.035. Maybe if I draw this differently, how about that? Okay. So if I was into this and I saw this little green action, you know what? This could wake up because it broke out. It came back and retested it. You know, there's more than one way to use FIB speed resistance line. So obviously, I'm not familiar with the fundamentals of Sunday swap. Most technical analysts are not into it, you know, are not totally into fundamentals. It's funny. I, I was on a show with this like totally hardcore guy. I mean, this guy, 
this guy can tell you like i don't know he, he can tell you where the high volume prints are without looking it up right you know he said to us last night he's like you know somebody had to tell me two weeks two ten days ago that the eth merge was happening that's how focused on pure ta he was so in this case you know that's good you don't want your technical analyst focus too much on things outside now because i'm in tv i like to put two and two together i like to synthesize information that's how i make my living anyway sunday swap right if it stays green it can continue to be green okay let's go to ergo ergo Okay, token metrics likes it. Okay, one thing you got to remember about this big move in Bitcoin is, you know, we have this thing where we track momentum in the overall market. You know, you got to think about what happens when total crypto market cap, if that whole thing flips bullish again, right? Our little momentum models, we're not the only ones who have it. One of the things the Astrobot guys have been selling people that perhaps I've undersold, right? Is that, you know, the analysis that I provide you plus these quant models. I mean, this is like, this is like a compact hedge fund, right? These are tools for the big guys that we're delivering at the retail level. So from looking at this, from looking at ERGO, I mean, if it's above 498, it can go to 584, you know, there's a lot of resistance at 584, and this is a classic example of what I've been talking about, right? You know, like this is down only. This is a give up trade. Then there's a base, and then it's the bigger the base, the higher in the space. It's like boom, flag, boom, right? This is an example of what can happen, right? This is an example of what can happen in the overall market. Okay, Jasmine, the Jasmine guys are back. Okay, Jasmine up 10%. Let's maybe redraw the fib lines here, maybe get something a little bit more realistic. Okay, these kind of things, they're tough to chart, right? So that is not working. Okay, let's go to token metrics and see if I can get anything over here. Jasmine is a good time to bring up a very simple point. Will my altcoin make it? Will my altcoin make it? Guess what I would say to yourself on that is, Tell yourself the truth, right? If the ETH merge happens and the crypto universe remembers why it's the crypto universe and your altcoin does well, well, then your altcoin might make it. If your altcoin doesn't do well, you know, don't kid yourself. So with Jasmine, if I got this right, 0.008 is, the, it's like, the point, it can't stay above it and it can't stay below it. So it looks like it wants to go back up to that level. Right? So it's two zeros and an eight. Is that right? Oh, maybe that's not correct. All right, let's go back over here and let's try it. Just maybe we just try a plain Jane trend line. Okay, so very interesting here. Okay, Ontario, Canada in the house. Okay, now they tried to go through this trend line once and failed. I drew this trend line. It's kind of arbitrary. I'm connecting the closing price of two big up candles right there. So Jasmine's breaking out. How do you know whether it's a real breakout? Well, it wasn't a real breakout here. 
because they came back down and it failed and went below the trend line. So if Jasmine goes up and keeps going, great. If Jasmine comes back down and holds, right, that's 0.0091. Okay. Alex Diaz says he likes XRP better than BTC. First killer says drink sparkling water. Always hydrate the protein, people. The ETH merge is the Super Bowl. Okay, Hellrod says, does Bill's TM, the Bill, does TM's uh, model market, you know, does it model market maker algos? I don't know that it tracks market maker algos, but the momentum components of the token metrics grade, the finance math that goes into it, because remember that's TA and business school mathematics smushed together. So, I would say we would track more of the CTAs or the commodity trading advisors. Now, those are big players, man, and they work off models. And we are trying to, you know, we're trying to get you on there, right, before those guys do their thing. Okay, wrong again, says best analysis in crypto. I'm glad I have TM and Notorious in this market. And, sir, we appreciate that. Okay. How about C-A-W? Okay, so C-A-W having trouble with that 60-day exponential moving average. Okay, the last time the Williams oscillator looked like this, it didn't exactly turn out good. So what you want to see is this thing turn around, right, and take out that 60-day because it's not doing it. It's not doing it right now. So, you know, I'm not hating on anybody's altcoin. Just make sure if you see everybody selling it at the 60-day, you know, just be realistic. Oh, my God. Somebody wants me to put up Zcash versus Bitcoin. Let's look at it. Okay, so Zcash underperforming Bitcoin today. Okay, so Zcash obviously underperforming Bitcoin today, but Zcash versus Bitcoin holding the 60-day exponential moving average. So we'll see. We'll see if I'm right. You know, like I said, when it comes to privacy, I'm basically buying it and I'm giving it to my daughter. That's what I'm doing with it. So, yeah, you know, I talk about it on a daily show. You know, it, it's interesting. Okay. But, you know, one day your wealth could be held against you. One day you will need to do transactions somewhere in the cryptoverse and you're not going to want people looking in your wallet. You're just not. Okay. Somebody said, ready for Bitcoin to become an altcoin. Okay. You know, that's interesting. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter whether Bitcoin is the greatest thing in the universe or something that no one is interested in. What matters is the future of money. Is Bitcoin the only component of the future of money? No. That's what I would say. Right. But what matters is, is that you know, like I said, money matters. Decentralized money matters, right? I, I think I would rather say that people are underestimating what Ethereum could do, especially if the dollar ever went down. Okay, Super Chat. Bill, what do you think of beefy finance? Okay, well, we always appreciate the Super Chats. Okay, so we have some wild price action here. Let's just um, make sure I got the right symbol. Okay, so correct me if I'm wrong, but this is beefy finance. Okay, so we did, this is the complete history. We did up only twice, and then we did down only. 
So this is fib speed resistance fan territory. And the key is, can we draw something interesting? Okay. So here's a question. Is DeFi dead? You know, is there any future in decentralized finance? So Beefy's got a bid to it. It's probably got to get through 389 in order to get going again. Okay. Uh, I think you're going to want to know where this is relative to its 60-day exponential moving average. Let's check it on token metrics. You know, you also got on the flip side, you got you to gotta make sure you understand your tokenomics, right? A a anything with lousy. Like I, I, I know that synthetics said that, you know, we're done printing synthetics. I think I may want to look at that, right? Late to the stream, Jersey boy saying hello from the far east. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Okay. So, I mean, Beefy's probably got to get itself about above 418. And if it does that, it can go to 542. British Columbia, Canada, welcome. Welcome. Steve J, chartist at work, smash the like button. Still want to go out with 2,000 likes, right? J is buzzing for the mint. So let's go back to that. Maybe we can end on that note. Let's see if I can get it up on the PowerPoint here. Okay, yeah, let's do this slide. All right, people, value proposition, do it. Token metrics, we provide research. We use machine learning and AI and human analysts. That's me. There's a bunch of other people. It's a company, right? It's a company. We provide research. We're always trying to get better. One of the ways we're trying to get better is we're trying to offer people like a web three way to access our service. So lifetime access plus art. That's so cool. I'm going to actually be featuring that right on the streams over the weekend where it's going to be everything from alpha TA on request and every war story I have going to empty out to come. I'm going to empty it all out this weekend. Whitelist 12 to 4 Eastern, waitlist 4 to 8, public sale 3 days and September 13th. 0.35 whitelist, 0.4 waitlist, 0.45 public. Okay. This NFT gives you research, art, and helps us be better. Why do we want to get better? For you, right? Don't forget. Discord, Discord, AstroBot Discord morning meeting. To where I get to the point, I can say all the words and all the things I can't say uh, for, say, a, a YouTube algorithm. It's going to be raw. It's going to be real, right? And every day, it's going to get better. It's going to get better every day. We're going to cover legacy. We're going to cover whatever we have to cover to get you ready for your trading day, okay? We're going to try to have one version of the market update for customers. And then we're probably going to have a conversational market update for YouTube, right? We're not going to disappear. I'm not going to leave you hanging. If you don't have the money, we got to service our customers. We're a company. So keep that in mind, but that doesn't mean I don't love y'all and I don't want to help you. Right? So we'll figure something out, but the alpha, the alpha of the alpha is in the Astrobot discord morning meeting. We are replicating the Wall Street morning meeting, okay, where traders used to sit and listen to researchers and head traders talk about where they think the market's going and why. All right, let's sum it up. He who has the best research wins. Token Metrics customers, we appreciate your business. 
regulars on this live stream, we appreciate your viewership. As this is your first live stream, welcome. Subscribe to the channel. We're going to be live basically all day tomorrow, three different times. Turn on alerts. Subscribe. Don't miss the Mint. Don't miss the AstroBot sale. And if you can't do any of that, don't miss us because we're going to give you all you can eat tomorrow. This is Bill Noble for the Market Update. See you tomorrow.